much, Liz. Thank you. Hello, timekeepers. Okay. <clears throat> I am a child of the 14th Ward Independent Democratic Club. After five years working in the United States Senate for Pennsylvania Senator, I came to Pittsburgh after graduating from Georgetown Law School to clerk for a judge on the US Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. I fell in love with Pittsburgh and I decided to stay here. And I raised my family here. And uh, my three kids bleed black and gold because I immersed myself in this community. And so many organizations from 14th Ward Independent Democratic Club, Mentoring and Big Brothers Big Sisters, uh, Sustainable Pittsburgh, Three Rivers Rowing, uh, uh, Carriage House Children's Center, I could go on and on, Re the uh, Rainbow Kitchen, Food Bank, and all those organizations, almost all of them, I started out as a volunteer, and then people saw that I was able to produce, and they put me on the board, and then after the board, I became the president of those boards, and I've led them, and today, all those organizations are much bigger and better than they were when I started. I built a law career here. In my law career, I've fought discrimination. I fought monopolies. I fought pharmaceutical drug companies. I fought political corruption. I fought housing, public housing mismanagement. And I found a home for politics here at the club. And I had great mentors, people like Molly Yard and Celeste Barron and Nat Hershey and Brenda Frazier. And these people, they gave me the opportunity to really understand politics and get me, gave me the opportunity to do great things in this club, like elect great judges. And I became the executive vice president of this club and got to know a lot of people in politics. And during that time, people saw that I could get things done. So I started to get appointments, first in the city, chairing the parking authority, where I uh, tore down a parking lot and put up paradise over at, not I alone, but we did, over at Shenley Plaza. And then I was the, made our representative to the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission, where we stopped a highway from going through Duck Hollow. And then Governor Rendell came and took me to Harrisburg and made me the head of banking and securities so I could protect vulnerable populations from financial fraud, issues like Main Street issues, but also fighting Wall Street. So, we find ourselves now at this incredibly challenging time, and we have existential challenges here in our democracy and in our country and our planet. Does that mean 30 seconds left? Oh, crap. Okay. Well, let me just tell you this. I hope someone asked me what I'm going to do when I get to Congress, okay? The things I'm going to do and the bills that I want to get passed, things I want to do. But I can tell you this. I'm sorry I didn't run earlier. I wish I had. I got incredibly sick in 2012. I was planning on it but I got better after four years. And suddenly I had to say to myself, now I got to put up or shut up. So I'm putting up. And that's why Mike Doyle has endorsed me. That's why Dan Frankel has endorsed me. That's why the Laborers Council, a collection of 10 trade unions has endorsed me because they know I can get things done in Washington because I know how to get things in done, done in Washington. And I know our community and our region here. So I'm sorry I didn't, please. Yeah. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> we just came off uh, eight hours sitting over at uh, the ACDC, so it's a little uh, it's a little overwhelming, but everyone did. So uh, first of all, we have a great mental health challenge. Our, our health system is broken. We've got to fix it for our teenagers, for our seniors, for people because of the pandemic, it's been exacerbated, but we've got to fix that system. So I'm going to be a champion for a National Patient and Provider Safety Authority that's gonna end medical error. And medical error for people who are brown and black is greatly disproportionate to those who are not. I'm going to make sure that we, that we get change to, uh, to that we achieve carbon neutrality and the president's timetable by 2050. And I'm gonna make sure that this region is a big part of figuring out how to get there and executing that. I'm gonna make sure that the Mon Valley is part and, and there are reinvestments in the Mon Valley. So they're part of that as well. And I'm gonna make sure that we change an infrastructure that we 
change the formulas in, in Washington so that the states that need it best, most, because of the roads and the bridges that we have that are crumbling here because of truck traffic and salt that we use, in a time when it's based on gas usage, it doesn't make any sense because we're moving to an electrical car system, if nothing else. We have to electrify the grid. And I'm gonna make sure that seniors can live in their homes safely and affordably and have the help they need by creating legislation to make a large movement something that the federal government supports. Well, first of all, I'm hoping that, uh, yeah, how do we how do we get to a carbon neutrality without getting rid of the fossil fuel industry? Well, so I believe that this is a complex question. I'm not for a moratorium on fracking. We shouldn't be doing it in our backyards. We need much heavier regulation. But we have to have a mix. We have to move away from coal and we have to transcend toward solar and other, other energies and ones that hydrogen, et cetera. We also need to look very seriously at a carbon tax. That would work. So th that's, that's the, the short answer to that. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm in favor of a two-state solution in Israel and the Mideast, and uh, I believe that the Palestinians and the Israelis need to work together to get that done, that we need to engage with our allies like Israel, our best friend in the Mideast, and we need to make sure that we push them to, to, to move toward that, but we're not going to be able to make that happen on our own. That's going to have to happen on their own, but we need to push in that direction. I support a two-state solution. Yes. Go ahead, Ed. Yeah, sure. Um, so there were we had 49 circulators of, of petitions. Uh, we had one who was paid, who came to us, had many references of of uh, of uh, campaigns he had worked on, rep recommended to us by people in the 14th Ward and elsewhere who worked with with him, and uh, and he went out. We checked his signatures as they came in. They appeared good. We had 2,000 signatures. We always had more than enough signatures. There was never a question that we were going to be on the ballot. This was raised because of that. I did not forge any signatures. Uh, and as soon as we, the question was raised, I appointed two people. I'm an employment lawyer. I know how to look into these things. I had two uh, uh, people with a lot of experience in law enforcement interview the person. We made a determination that though many of those signatures probably were valid, that some caused question, we threw them out, we still had more than enough, and the two campaigns that were challenging us didn't, it was put up or shut up time, and they didn't do anything, they didn't file a challenge, it was just a distraction, because Mike Doyle had, I believe, because Mike Doyle had endorsed me, and they were trying to take the news cycle. Yeah, anything else? Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm completely pro-union. I support the PRO Act. I'm wearing this signature, this pen, because it was given to me by uh, union members. I'm supported by the laborers. That's absolutely not true. I've never taken a case where I've been involved adverse to a union ever in my life. I've worked with the steelworkers closely on, and as the head of ADA here, and as uh, um, I've worked with a, a bunch of unions helping them with their business matters and others. I've never had an NLRB case. I've never busted a union. During 2001 to 2011, when I was head of the employment group at Leach Tishman, we had no practice at all that dealt with that. And I've never personally been involved. That article that was sent out, that's illegal. It's a violation of the federal election laws. It didn't disclose who had sent it out. And it was a dirty trick. And we, if we want to talk about 
what this party, how we're going to get ahead and move forward as a party. We've got to focus on the issues. We've got to stop doing these diversionary tactics where we take good candidates. If you want people to run who are good and get involved in politics, then don't do that kind of stuff. That doesn't make it good for anybody. No one wants to be here to have those kind of spats. We want to focus on the issues. They're important issues we need to focus on. Yeah. I think, I think, yeah, I think. Then it was mailed to every committee person in the entire Allegheny County. That's illegal. Yeah, that was written by a friend of, the, of one of my opponents. I mean, it said three times. I don't know who did it. Frankly, I'm not going to focus on it because, first of all, it's not true. Nothing in is there is true. And I don't know where it came from. But again, we're, we're being distracted, you guys. We have real problems. People are living paycheck to paycheck. They're trying to figure out how to get their kids educated. They're trying to get their kids who are having tremendous mental problems and challenges fixed. If we're going to be as a party move ahead, we've got to fix these problems. We've got to get things that matter in people's lives. We've got to do things that are, are going to make a difference in people's lives. And then they'll see when you elect good people, they're going to want to get involved in those elections so they can elect people get make a difference. That's what this is about. We're all responsible for each other. We've got to help each other. It's what I do every day as chair of the US Civil Rights Commission for Pennsylvania. I bring people together. I don't want to divide. I want to get things done. That's why I'm running for Congress. Thank you, Liz.